My name is Georgia Took, and I am here at the Victoria Arts Council today talking about my work in um, Borderlands. I just graduated from uh, UVic, the visual arts program, um, spring of last year, and I've been um, working on my practice ever since. And uh, my work has definitely changed a lot uh, since the pandemic happened. Both of these works I made um, in my final year of school when I still had access to um, filming studios and uh, an actual space and help from my peers um, to make these works. So my practice has changed a lot, but I'm just so happy that I get to show these works now because these were both supposed to be in my um, grad show, which was canceled last year. Um, so I'm glad that I get to talk about this now. Um, so this piece here, this is uh, called The Performer. It has um, uh, a woman in a pink dress uh, that is performing on a perpetual loop within this intimate theater setting. Um, and it kind of follows like her flashing back and forth between an older and younger self, um, the older self, which is like calculated and the younger self, which is carefree. Um, eventually there's um, a, like a break in the performance where the, uh, the, the calculated character kind of um, kind of snaps out of her, her like perfect posture and kind of has this moment to reflect. Um, so I wanted to just talk a little bit about like how I made the work and, and what kind of, uh, what it means now to me. So um, when I started my final year of art school, I came back from a very um, uninspiring summer and I felt really blocked creatively. So I, um, I booked out the gray room, I wheeled in my big clothing rack of costumes, my bins of wigs, and uh, I just set up the camera to like play with some characters. Um, so I filmed this one, and then I also filmed the, the child character in the family portraits. Um, and then I filmed the, the parents for the family portraits a few months later in the next semester, but we'll get to that in a moment. The way I build a character is very intuitive. It, um, I look through lots of costumes. I usually just go to like a thrift store like Value Village and go through all the costumes. Usually around Halloween is like the perfect time to find some good uh, fun costume pieces. Um, and I just pick cl uh, clothing pieces, um, props, wigs that I just feel um, go together. And then once I put those on, I go in front of the camera and I start doing um, behaviors and mannerisms that I feel the character would do. And then those sort of, um, the actions, the, the visuals, that sort of informs who the character is going to become. And then it's usually not till later that I watch the footage back that the, the meaning and the narrative kind of comes from the performance. This one in particular, I uh, was my first, uh, the first day of my weekend long shooting marathon. Um, and I was just in the gray room by myself. And um, I was in the, the character that has like the long pink dress, the gray wig, and um, doing these actions, uh, doing this performance with this like big plastered on smile on my face um, until like this sort of like realization just like struck me. And this is when like she kind of breaks the performance. And that first time I filmed it, the breaking of performance was like completely genuine. Like I would just suddenly struck me how like unimportant at what I was doing was, like how privileged I was to just be in art school and be playing like dress up and um, like playing in front of a camera, like it just felt so unimportant. Um, so I like kind of sat in that for a moment um, until I like snapped out of it, put the smile back on, finished the performance and turn off the camera just to reflect for the rest of the night. Um, and so then, Later, I came back, I filmed a younger character, and this piece kind of um, came to symbolize a bunch of different things for me. Um, like one of which being um, how performance is kind of uh, um, like visible in, in every aspect of, of our lives, not just in an artistic sense, like what I was used to, like in the theater. Um, I used to be very into singing and performing like in front of an audience. Um, but how I kind of noticed that performance is like prevalent in uh, like how we interact with our peers and interact with our teachers and employers and our families. And um, that kind of propelled me to making the family portraits and then a few other works that I'm kind of
kind of exploring. Um, but it also came to like symbolize my like relationship with art school. Like it was coming to an end. There was at the beginning of art school, I was like so carefree. I was naive. I like graduating and having a career was so distant that it felt like these possibilities were limitless. And then when I came to the end of my degree, like I was scared and calculated and jaded and cynical and felt like all these possibilities were slipping away. Um, and, uh, and then I also could see this kind of being like even read through like, um, like a feminist lens, like how women are expected to perform in certain ways to, um, to be taken seriously, to be desired, to be loved, um, and uh, perform in ways that say the media expects us to be. Um, so I feel like there's a lot that I've learned about myself and how I understand um, like the world I'm living in, as like cliche as that sound. I, I feel like I hope that um, anyone's exploration through making art or through viewing art um, helps them understand who they are and where they kind of sit in the world. When I filmed the first like child character, I was thinking about how we receive love and attention as children and then how that um, influences how we seek and give love and attention in our re adult relationships. Um, but then once I filmed the mother and father characters, the piece kind of became more about how we perform within family dynamics, like how a child performs in order to um, uh, get that love and attention from their parents and then how parents perform um, because I feel like lots of families like really desperately want to be perceived as a good mother, or good parents, or the perfect little family. And so oftentimes we, um, like parents, will sacrifice something genuine in the relationship with the child in order to like be that perfect family. So we have these like this family sitting for their for their portrait, and like I can definitely see like in like the mother who's like, I don't want you to misbehave because we have to be like this family. But if we like if she took a moment to be like, what is, what's wrong? Like, why, what's going on? Like, it could have um, definitely broke that illusion of a perfect family, but it could have um, like fostered a more safe and nurturing environment for the child to maybe speak what their actual needs are. Something that I wrote about with this piece was how um, I found that the, like a family is like um, a microcosm of the world. And I um, just wanted to read this quote that I feel like perfectly kind of summed it up from this, uh, um, this book that I was reading called The New People Making by Virginia Satar. Um, so she says that everyone who holds a position of power or influence in the world was once an infant and how they use that power of influence depends largely on what that person learned in the family while growing up. And I feel like that kind of perfectly sums up how, um, how important those family dynamics are and, and how um, what happens in individual families with like in closed doors will then like affect how people act in their personal relationships with their friends or their family or if they are in a position of power like in um, in government or institutions as well. Um, so although that like this family is definitely like like visually quite specific, like it's like more of um, like, a, like aristocratic kind of comes to mind. Like it's very like, um, looks like a wealthier class, like a white family. And so obviously like in a visual sense, I feel like it's not as like immediately like relatable to a, a lot of people, but I hope that the, the interactions between the family, um, more people could see themselves within that relationship between um, the different family members. Just want to say thank you to like Victoria Arts Council, to Monica and Luna for um, thinking of me and like wanting to um, bring me into this show. And like it's such a, an honor to be shown alongside like so many wonderful, talented artists. I'm so so grateful to be here.